Have you ever thought about the idea of working two online jobs, working for two separate companies, making two separate paychecks? Ever since the start of the global pandemic, more and more millennials started to exploit this idea. According to some experts, work from home is here to stay. 25% of all professional jobs in North America will be remote by the end of 2022. And by 2023, this number will only increase. In this video, I will share with you my experience working two online remote jobs, making an annualized salary of $182,000. For those of you that are thinking about working two online jobs, my hope is that as you watch this video, you learn a key skill that I mastered as I created an abundant list of companies that offered 100% remote jobs, especially if you don't already have a job that is 100% remote. Also in this video, I will share with you my day-to-day -day life and how I manage working two online jobs. Please do leave me a comment down below if you have any questions regarding my online work experience or my story in general. Also, this video took hours and hours to make and edit, so I would really appreciate it if you guys give me a like below so the YouTube algorithm can push this video to the people that are looking for this content. For those of you that don't already know my story, my background is in public accounting where I work for one of the largest accounting firms in the world. One thing to note about public accounting is that it is a client service type of job and has one of the highest turnover rates in the accounting industry. Meaning, most people quit just after one or two years of working there. In the post-pandemic world, more and more people in the public accounting world like me started to take advantage of the fact that we can work from home 100% of the time. We already proved to the firm that we can be as productive with our work, whether that be in the office facing the client or at home wearing pajamas and a nice polo shirt for our meetings. So step number one in getting two online jobs is that you have to be in a position of abundance. You have to have a list of recruiters and employers where you can contact anytime and demand that you can work from home 100% of the time. The biggest reason for this is time management. If you have two jobs, time has to be on your side. You would not want to be stuck in traffic heading to the office and stuck in traffic again heading back where you could have easily spent one or two hours of this commute working for your second job. If you're watching this video and you currently don't have a job where you can work 100% from home, then my suggestion is that you turn to LinkedIn. If you already have a LinkedIn profile and you've updated your past work experience, then chances are you probably already have a recruiter that is reaching out to you, spamming your messages for other job opportunities. I would start with these recruiters and just build a script where you can copy and paste and send to each one of them. In that script, I would make sure to add that you are looking for a 100% remote job. Go through the process of talking to these recruiters via phone call, via Zoom, to try and extract a list of companies and firms that are offering these 100% remote jobs. If you have no luck with this, then no worries. Then I would turn to the LinkedIn search bar where we can find more recruiters. Whatever your career path is, I would just type that in in the search bar, followed by the word recruiter. In my case, as an accountant, as an auditor, I would type in the LinkedIn search bar something like accounting and finance recruiter, accounting recruiter, public accounting recruiter, and take a look at all the list of people that pop up and add every single one of them to your LinkedIn friends. I would play around with these related keywords to see what best fits for your career. Remember, the more years of experience you have, then the easier it'll be to demand 100% work from home. And just like you learn in sales, messaging just one recruiter will get you nowhere. For my experience, I would typically add between 50 to 100 recruiters in LinkedIn related to my career path. Once they've added me back on LinkedIn, then I would just message every single one of them a copy and pasted script 
mentioning that I am looking for 100% remote jobs. Out of the 50 to 100 recruiters that you message, chances are roughly about 50% of them will respond to you. And out of the 50% of them that responds to you, you've done your job once you can get four to seven recruiters to give you a full list of companies that is offering 100% remote jobs. Build a good resume and really sell yourself to the recruiters so you can get as many job interviews as possible with these types of companies. Put yourself in the position where you really excel in these interviews. The company really likes you and thinks that you have value to add to their company. Once you enter the stage of the process, then you officially have the upper hand when it comes to negotiating. I'm not going to discuss the details of how you should negotiate in this video, but one thing to note is that you should really know the job description of the company you just interviewed for. For example, in my case, I know that if I were to interview for a public accounting firm, it would literally be borderline impossible to have two full-time public accounting jobs. For any current or former auditors watching this video, you would already know that. In order to manage two online jobs, I decided to go full-time with the first company and part-time with the second company. During the interview process for my first job, I made it very clear in the interview process that I was looking to settle down and no longer wanting to work between 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. or midnight, just like I did back in the days. So they already knew that. By doing this, I knew that my first job, the full-time job, would end roughly at around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. For my part-time job, I was able to negotiate working part-time in the late afternoons and evenings as a senior auditor. The best part about this was the fact that my first job was in central time zone and my second job was in Pacific time zone, so two hours apart. Meaning right around 5 p.m. when I logged off for my second job, it would be about 3 p.m. Pacific time zone where I would start my second job, just in time to catch any managers before they logged off around 6 p.m. their time for any questions that I may have for the day for the task assigned to me. So in short, if you can find two online jobs with two different time zones that work in your favor, then the better it will be for you. I really enjoyed the setup during these three months as it is scientifically proven that you lose a significant amount of productivity if you do two things at once. In my case, if I was to handle two online jobs between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., then my quality of work would have significantly decreased and chances are I would have been fired for low quality of work. Now that we have all the logistics set up, let's finally talk about my schedule and how I've managed to keep my mental sanity. Monday through Thursdays were exactly the same in terms of my work hours and my routine. I would typically get up around 7 a.m. Between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m., I did the same routine in which I read one to two chapters of the New Testament in which I prayed and meditated about it afterwards. After that, I showered, did my skincare routine, and I took my morning shake, which consisted of a lot of vegetables. Then after that, I would finally be ready to start my first job where I would head to the living room and open my laptop right around 8 o'clock sharp in the morning. I really didn't have a set amount of time where I took a set amount of breaks, where other YouTubers would recommend taking a break every hour or so. For me, I just worked as much as I can until my brain started to feel foggy, in which after that, I did take these little 5 to 10 minute breaks. One thing I highly recommend is that when you do take these five or 10 minute breaks, you should definitely ignore what's happening in the stock market or cryptocurrencies as these can really bother your mind. As for me, I know that if I look at cryptocurrency prices, the price volatility of that will just be so addicting and literally be a distraction for my work. So I avoided that. I typically just spent these five minutes looking out the window or in prayer, really meditating to God and reminding myself that I'm doing this for Him and not for the greed of money. I would typically have my lunch between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. 
and then get back in the group of things later in the afternoon. And then before you know it, it's already 5 p.m., just in time to start my second job. I gave myself a solid 30 minute break to really refresh my mind and regroup before starting my second job at around 5.30 p.m. I then worked for a solid two to two and a half hours before taking a 30 minute break. During this dinner break, I tried to do it all. I typically would do 50 minutes of push-ups, sit-ups, and jumping jacks, so very quick exercise, and also the remaining 15 minutes eating my quick dinner, which I already meal prepped the weekend before. After that, I would only have about one to 1.5 hours of work remaining for my second job, so I really use that as motivation to really pump through and get the work done for the day. At 10 p.m. sharp, I stopped my work completely. I spent about one hour for myself. 30 minutes of that time, I spent watching YouTube videos of things that I enjoyed, and then the remaining 30 minutes, I spent my time in my nightly prayers. 11 p.m. was my set bedtime, in which I really tried my best to get at least eight hours of sleep. This was my schedule between Monday through Thursday. For Friday, I had the same schedule except for my second job, I typically cut that off around 7 p.m. where I would head to Bible study and had dinner with a friend. I would finish any remaining hours related to my second job on Saturday mornings. All in all, my second job only required about 20 hours worth of work, but really paid me a good hourly wage. I did this life for about three months before finally deciding to call it quits. If I continued this lifestyle for 12 months long, I would have racked in an annual salary of $182,000. Since I only worked two jobs for roughly three months, I was still able to rack in roughly $125,000. To wrap this up, I wanna share with you some valuable key lessons that I've learned as I worked those two online jobs. The first thing to keep in mind is that you should really have a deep purpose on why you even want to work two jobs and take a beating on your mental and emotional well-being. If your purpose for working two jobs is to buy something materialistic or go on a luxury vacation, then I guarantee you certainly will burn out fairly quickly. I would also give yourself a timeline. In my opinion, I don't know of any normal person that is able to sustain this lifestyle of working 60 hours a week and 12 months long. Maybe your number one goal is to retire from your corporate job. So this second job is only a boost to your income so that you can hopefully accelerate your retirement. In my case, my number one motivation for earning that extra income for my second job was I had a lot of personal debt that I had to pay off in my life and I was also helping my mom with some of her personal expenses. At the end of the day, don't be too addicted to money. The last thing you want is working all those hours Monday through Friday and then spending your Saturday nights eating luxury dinners, spending hundreds of dollars and maybe even dropping $2,000 in bottle service that night. That would be what I would consider a very dangerous money loop to be in. Only do this for a greater purpose and always remember that God is always there to guide you in your struggles. I hope you learned something from watching this video. Please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you want to watch me and my journey as I try to rebuild my life and try to get up again as I've lost the majority of my portfolio in a bankrupt company.